So good morning and welcome to another session on corporate governance by Naipunya Business School, Pongam, Korati East, Trishur. So this is uh, BUS 4C22, Corporate Governance Syllabus, University of Calicut for the MBA program. And myself, I am Dr. Jacob PM, Director, Naipunya Business School. The entire syllabus of uh, this uh, corporate governance is divided into uh, 10 parts and this is going to be the sixth part and uh, this is module 3 part 1 and today we will be discussing on another step on corporate governance especially on various committees on corporate governance which includes Sarbanes-Oxley Act, Blue Ribbon Committee, Cadbury Committee, Greenberry Committee, King's Committee and Security Exchange Commission. So these are all the initiatives which has happened outside India. However, the many of these recommendations have also become a part of the uh, our corporate governance formation uh, rules and guidelines. So after this we will be seeing the initiatives by SEBI on different committees. So you will find these committees to be a guideline as far as our corporate governance initiatives are concerned. So welcome you all once again to the various committees on corporate governance. Now, which are the various committees on corporate governance? The theme of corporate governance has got recognition, especially there have been a lot of, lot of scams which has happened in throughout the world. And as a result, uh, countries also have been very much aware on corporate governance. And uh, there has been various committees which has been formed. Because every time when a scam happened, there were certain loopholes that the uh, companies have found. And they worked on that. So in order to close that, uh, close that loophole, uh, many of these countries, uh, especially the stock exchanges or the government regulatory bodies, have already been giving different committees to see that you know uh, those loopholes have been closed. So there are various committees. We will go through these committees. We will be, have to learn all these committees like Sarbanes Oxley Act, Blue Ribbon Committee, Cadbury Committee of England, King's Committee from South Africa, Greenberry Committee, Security Exchange Commission from US, and rest all of the committees are from India. So we will be studying about JJ Rani Committee, SEBI India, Naresh Chandra Committee, Kumaramangalam Pirla India, and Narana Murthy Committee of 2003. So kindly be attentive to all these uh, committees which are from abroad because you will find almost similar uh, decisions or similar rules and regulations have been uh, followed by our, you know, the committees which has come from India also. This is the sixth part of the 10 part series. Request all of you to be attentive to the session on corporate governance. Let us look at Sarbanes Oxley Act. Sarbanes Oxley Act was brought was formed in US, especially after the scandals like Enron, WorldCom, Tyco. And uh, Sarbanes Oxley Act was signed into a law on July 30th, 2002, to promote confidence among investors. The same as what we have for our SEBI. Now the six main areas of the act are oversight board. Now the oversight board was created to oversee the audit of public companies. Now whatever auditing practices or auditors would be giving an account uh, of the uh, company's uh, total, uh, total uh, sales and uh, resources and all put together, infrastructure and all put together. And this oversight board will check that, apart from the audit committee which is already there in the board of directors. So this particular oversight board was created only to see the audit of public companies. So the board has got set standards and rules for audit, especially regarding to even accounting practices or what all things to be disclosed. And all accounting firms that audit public companies must register with the oversight board. So there will be a uniform accounting practice which will happen 
from the side of the accounting firms. It also inspects, investigates and enforces compliance from these registered firms. Now another one area is on auditor independence. The act imposes a one year waiting period for an audit firm employee who leave an accounting firm to become an executive for a former client. SEBI also has a similar policy. If you read about SEBI in the previous module, uh, modules and slides, you would find that SEBI also has got a similar type of rule. Where if an audit, if a person moves out, an employee who moves out of an accounting firm to become an executive or an independent director in another company, they have to wait for at least for one year waiting period. The former firm must wait for one period before performing any audit services for the new employee. Similarly, an audit firm also should wait for one year before performing an audit service for the new employer. So that is again on auditor independence. Uh, then greater financial disclosures also was another one uh, which Sarbanes-Oxley Act looked into. Transaction relationships that are off balance sheet that may affect financial status now must be disclosed. Annual reports must include a report stating the manager is responsible for the internal control structure and procedures for financial reporting. Usually it will be the CFO who will be responsible as far as uh, annual reports are concerned. So after once the report comes from the audit firm, it goes to the audit committee. The audit committee looks into that. From that audit committee it goes to the board and uh, during that time the CFO has to countersign that so that you know clarity as far as financial disclosures are provided. Of course this again goes to the oversight board also. Now disclosure for analyst. Now analyst are basically uh, agencies you know which analyze a company similar to what we have in Crizzle. The Similar to Crizzle you know there are other agency uh, also for example McKinsey or all these uh, are basically analysts. Analyst has to report whether he or she holds any securities in the company or received corporate compensation. Brokers and dealers also have to disclose if the public company is a client. So analyst cannot favor any of these companies. That is the reason it has been clearly said that you know if he, has, he holds securities in the company or received any corporate compensation they cannot they have to disclose it and moreover they will not be able to become an analyst for that particular company because there could be chances of bias. Corporate and criminal fraud accountability, altering, destroying, concealing or falsifying records of documents with the intent to influence a federal investigation or bankruptcy case is subject to fines up to 20 years imprisonment. There are chances you know that even many of these companies after uh, you know after uh, once they are caught they may try to destroy or falsify records which again can subject to fines up to 20 years. This has already happened with some of these companies like Enron as well as uh, with Tyco also. Attorney's responsibilities. Attorneys also require rule requiring an attorney to report of any security violations to the CEO. So attorneys are basically uh, people who give legal information to the companies. So if there is a violation which has happened, the attorney also is even though the attorney is, is, uh, is appointed by the company board, company board, they have to report these violations to the CEO and maybe sometimes even to the federal also. So security violations also have to be reported. Now the next one is actually Blue Ribbon Committee again from which was instituted by the New York Stock Exchange and the National Association of Security Dealers for improving the working of corporate audit committees. The committee has given certain recommendations specifically for the audit committees. So let us look at what are those recommendations. Members of the audit committee should be independent directors and financially literate. In fact, if you look at SEBI also, the same thing could be there. There should be a three member committee out of which two of them should be independent directors. But here they have mentioned that they should all be independent direct directors and financially literate. That means they should have a degree in they should be qualified chartered accountants or ICWA. Similar to that, they should have financial literacy also. External auditors being the representatives of shareholders should periodically discuss the quality of company's accounting principles in relation to generally accepted accounting principles gap with the audit committees. 
Now gap is going to be the norm in years to come uh, and external auditors have to periodically discuss the quality of company accounting as yes, compared to that of gap because gap uh, is going to be the type of audit which is going to happen throughout the world. So that is another uh, decision which has come from Blue Ribbon Committee. Statutory auditors should maintain their independence in discharging their professional responsibilities and on an annual basis the committee should review and discuss with accountants all significant relationships the accountants have with the corporation to determine the accountants independence that means if they are holding some securities or if they have a relationship with the board that should always be uh, brought before the board and blue ribbon committee has also recommended that audit committee should have a former written charter also so there should be certain guidelines also as far as uh, audit committee is concerned so that has actually brought in more of transparency as far as the board is concerned and also talks about the responsibility and accountability of the audit committee now let us look at cadbury committee cadbury committee was basically from uk and uh, the stated objectives of cadbury committee was to help raise the standards of corporate governance and the level of confidence in financial reporting and auditing by setting it clearly what it sees as the respective responsibilities of those involved and it, what it believes is the expected is expected of them now they have made certain objectives and decisions also some of the some of the regulations that they have brought in are the board should meet regularly retain full and effective control over the company and monitor the executive management in fact in india it is they should meet at least four times in a year similarly uh, they have mentioned you know that they should meet regularly the board should include non executive directors of sufficient caliber and sub number for their views to carry significant weight in the board's decision or in other words they should be uh, literate in management and should be able to provide uh, provide even uh, suggestions as far as the working of the board was concerned all directors should have access to advice and services of the company secretary company secretary i mean an AC, acs man in india who is responsible to the board for ensuring that the board procedures are followed non executive directors non executive directors are directors who are independent directors not promoters understood i hope you understand that should bring an independent judgment to bear on issues of strategy performance resources including key appointments and standards of conduct so this particular job is given to non executive directors because they are independent directors outside the uh, company promoters non executive directors should be appointed for specified terms and reappointment should not be automatic that means you know they should have a term maybe 3 years or 5 years and maybe in india it is twice and after that they should have a uh, break and then only would be appointed again however this is all pertaining to the board non executive director should be selected through a formal process and both this process and their appointment should be a matter for the board as a whole now cadbury committee also recommended that shareholders require that remuneration of director should be both fair and competitive so uh, that is again another one it should be fair at the same time it should be competitive also because then only the best of directors would be joining with the board the annual general meeting provides opportunity for shareholders to make the view on such matters as directors benefit known to their boards they should also publicly inform as to what is the remuneration that the directors get it is the board's duty to present a balanced and understandable assessment of the board company's position the board should establish an audit committee of at least 3 non executive directors with written terms of reference which will clearly this authority and duties this is a very similar one as that you find in our sebi also where it should be three non three non executive directors and of sebi talks about in you know, a one person should be uh, at least uh, two of them should be literate in uh, finance cadbury committee also talks about effectiveness of company system of the internal control and a single person should not be vested the decision making power that is the role of chairman and chief executive should be separated clearly so they talk about you know promoters should not become actually the chairman as well as the chief executive it should be separate 
uh, preferably an independent person should be there and they talk also about majority of directors should be independent that is they should not have any financial interest in the company now in india also we have to understand that india also i hope you remember that if the chairman is an executive uh, executive uh, mem it's, it's an executive uh, committee member then the the, the number of non executive members should be 50 percentage and if the chairman is a independent person then one third of the members should be independent okay in the board all right similar cadbury committee also you would find similar things the term of the directors can be extended beyond 3 years only after the prior approval of the shareholders similar to what we have in sebi also a remuneration committee with the majority of non executive directors should decide on the pay of the executive directors so non executive directors should actually decide on the pay of the executive directors in fact executive directors could be promoters or investors here actually you would find their their remuneration is being decided by non executive the information regarding the audit fee should be made public and there should be regular rotation of the auditors also so cadbury committee has actually been uh, very transparent they have given more powers to the independent directors uh, similarly uh, to the board also they have mentioned about what an audit committee should be effectiveness of internal control and all those things make it actually uh, difficult for any type of frauds to happen however you would find that many of the corporates will try to overcome all these things also so look at the next one which is called as mervin king committee from south africa and uh, very popular and it has included mervin uh, committee is being very popular and it has included many things and the latest editions are also have come up so let us look at what mervin committee mervin king committee has to say uh, according to that uh, according to mervin king committee there should be a minimum of two executive directors on the board the chief executive ceo and the director responsible for finance function so ceo and the director should be responsible for finance function the board chairman should be an independent non executive director so according to mervin king it should not be an executive or a promoter or an investor he should be an independent non executive director the board should appoint the ceo who should be separate from the chairman similar to what we have in the previous one uh, a previous one where we discussed you know that the ceo as well as the chairman should be different similar to what we have in cadbury committee the board should meet as often as required to fulfill their duties preferably at least four times per annum similar to what we have in sebi the board should ensure that there is a transparent and effective communication between stakeholders on both positive and negative aspects of the business the board should report on effectiveness of company system of internal controls in the integrated report so internal controls usually also should be discussed and uh, this again good uh, recommendation as far as king's committee other than that uh, there are other things also king's committee has discussed was on board composition like similar to what we have with sebi the number of meetings held attendance and activities the length of service and age of directors is another important aspect significant directorships of each board member whether they have directorships in uh, other companies and if at all they have how many companies it should be in fact uh, sebi has got very clear guidelines on that and these are all coming from actually the mervin king committee also uh, the reasons for cessation of appointment of directors also is given uh, how directors will should not be stopped appoint uh, stopping of appointment of directors for example the education qualification and experience of the direct directors if it is not according to what is required by the board they should not be selected any actual potential connections or exposure for example if the director has got exposure or a relative or maybe holding securities of the company they should not be selected as a director uh, whether supervising management is required in case uh, retention of the board experience should be called for Uh, in fact in especially board experience also should be looked at before appointing the director the board should appoint an audit risk and remuneration and nomination committee also so these are also the reasons why uh, director appointment of director should be stopped now let us look at greenbury committee which has come from the confederation of the british 
industry cbi in india we call it as cii confederation of indian industry in determining the directors remuneration and to prepare a code of such practices for use by public limited companies of uk the code produced the greenberry code of best practices which was divided into four sections one remuneration packages for the ceo and other directors the required level of disclosure needed by shareholders regarding details of uh, directors remuneration and whether there is a need to obtain shareholder approval so that is one of them regarding remuneration package where we need to get approval from the board specific guidelines for determining remuneration policy for directors and service contracts and provision finding the company to pay compensation to a director particularly in the event of dismissal for unsatisfactory performance suppose if you are terminating the contract of the director then compensation should be paid to such a person in fact uh, when infosys uh, sent out its former ceo they had to pay a compensation for that uh, greenberry also committee also talks about role of chairperson and chief executive should be split both of them should not come from uh, should not be the same person it should be two different people and it should be preferably it can be two non executive directors uh, the directors report should incorporate statements on their responsibilities in respect of financial statements accounting records internal audit adherence to the code of corporate practice and conduct along with the details of non adherence so there should always be a code also uh, based on how things are happening corporate practice code of corporate practice should be there for the corporation shareholder should be properly used the meetings by asking questions on accounts for which form should be provided in the annual reports so shareholders should be uh, should participate but the better participation of shareholders by asking questions as far as accounts are concerned and corporate should have effective internal audit committee with written terms of reference from the board so there should have been a very clear terms of reference means again similar to what we have code of conduct also code of conduct or code of corporate practice so that is again has to be there as far as greenberry committee was concerned now security exchange commission also from usa uh, similar to what we have our sebi uh, we have there is in usa it is called a security exchange commission it oversees security exchanges security brokers and dealers investment advisors mutual funds in an effort to promote fair dealing the disclosure of important market information and to prevent fraud so similar to what sebi is uh, in us it is called as security exchange commission The role of Securities and Exchange Commission is to administer federal securities laws that protect investors to see whether the company is complying to the norms of the federal securities. Uh, so, like what we have, uh, we have some different acts, you know, which uh, SEBI will oversee whether the corporation is following. Similar to that, you know, SEC also uh, will be looking at whether the corporation is following the federal securities act that protect investors. The SEC also ensures that securities market are fair and honest, and if necessary, enforce security laws through the appropriate sanctions. Now, if there are, uh, they check whether it is fair and honest. If not, they will have to, they will uh, come out with sanction against that corporation also. Uh, the SEC oversees the activities of all participants in the securities market, including publicly held corporations. That is, in India, it is called as PSUs, public utilities. which include actually uh, our uh, governance you know public governance investment companies and advisors security brokers dealers to ensure that investors are adequately informed and their interests are protected so sec has got little more powers than sebi in sebi it is limited only to listed companies whereas in sec you would find that it looks into public utilities run by the government where uh, public sector organizations uh, psu or uh, like other companies also investment companies banking uh, financial companies security brokers dealers all these people of course sebi also has widened uh, its role towards uh, uh, stock exchanges security brokers and dealers without sebi license now nobody can operate in india so similar to that you will find security exchange commission also very broadly and uh, has given actually uh, taken up the interest of investors what are security exchange commission Uh, responds to the major laws that securities exchange commission is responsible for securities act of 1933 securities exchange act of 1934 that is our stock exchange uh, public utility holding company act of 1935 trust indenture act of 1939 in
Investment Company Act of 1940, Investment Advisors Act of 1940, and uh, Sarbanes Oxley Act of 2002. Now, uh, actually, the last slide. I hope uh, the committees. If you look at broadly all these committees, you will find that India also follows a similar or many of these guidelines which these committees have produced are uh, taken uh, from several committees across the world. And on our own, we have also created committees. Yeah, committees like JJ Rani Committee, Naresh Chandra Committee, Virla Committee, Infosys, uh, there is Narana Murthy Committee. All these committees have, have studied uh, these committees which has happened, which has taken place in the West and in Africa. And uh, together, we have also considered what all things should be there in the context of India. And uh, the Indian context is also, uh, as I have told you, it is actually there are three different types of companies and three different types of operations or more different types of operations are required. We have PSUs, MNCs and family held companies. So we have little more uh, to be thought about as compared to other countries. So our committees also, uh, the committees which SEBI or maybe CIA has constituted, have also been looking into what all things have happened in the in the West and they have taken those recommendations and have uh, transferred it to the Indian context also. I hope uh, if you study these committees, then it will be very easy for you to answer about SEBI also because SEBI's directions are all uh, from these committees also and the model which SEBI follows is from the Anglo-Saxon model and the German model. I hope uh, you remember that. It was there in my previous slides. I hope uh, clear, if you are clear with the committees, please brush through these committees so it will be very easy for you to learn about SEBI. However, the next part of this particular video talks about SEBI and the different committees in India. So once again, thank you very much for being with us. If you need to have any clarification, you can always contact Naipunya Business School or you can mail to me at hod at mbanimit.ac.in and I will try to offer you clarification on this. So thank you very much for being with me. Goodbye.